Oh, boys, are we back for another self-made episode? It has been a minute, Jackson. It has been a long time, actually. I would like to apologize for us skipping last week's episode. Uh, guests didn't line up that well. And honestly, I felt like we needed a break, a little refresher. Yeah. We, because we needed to lock down two individuals. I think that actually this is the first time that we've had two separate guests on one episode self-made. We've got Cease and Elevate. Elevate obviously being 2018 and the 2019 cutest e-boy yes. in the world. E-athlete. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. Actually, important. break it down for me. What is it? So, pretty much it's fan voted, right? There's a poll every year and I had like around, I think, 20 million votes <laughs> and then 26 million the next year. So, yeah, I beat out people like Nate Hill, like very, very <laughs> yeah. few people's. But, yeah, pretty much I'm just the cutest e-athlete there is and, yeah. Well, it's an honor that more later. We're, we're going to unpack that. <laughs> it's an honor to have you on the podcast. Yes. And then obviously Cease is here. Do you have anything that you, you've been fan voted? Any titles? No. I mean, <laughs> just cool as motherfucker alive. You're yeah, just a Fortnite much. millionaire. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Fortnite millionaire. <laughs> Self-proclaimed. So basically, uh, Cease and Elevate, for anyone that doesn't know, are on the uh, 100 Thieves competitive Fortnite team. They went to the World Cup and collectively won $1.9 million as a duo. Uh, Cease fell a little short in the solos, but it didn't matter because you already secured the bag the first day. <laughs> At that point, I would imagine that it was probably just icing on the cake, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. basically. And you guys have been with 100 Thieves for quite a few months now. Yeah. So we're probably coming up on like six, seven or eight, right? Yep. Yeah. It's, it's been a minute. And you guys have represented the organization so well. So, Jackson, explain to us why Cease and Elevate are here rather than a business guest extraordinaire. (laughs) So, first off, I think these guys are very extraordinary. I think that's worth noting. But we've been thinking about self-made and kind of what we want this podcast to be. And more than anything, I think we keep coming back to the name, which you guys couldn't possibly be more self... You're literally self-made Fortnite millionaires and you're 17 and 18 years old. You guys are young. It's insanity. Um, First off, and we wanted to have you guys on and do like, again, a slightly different take on self-made, but we're really, really excited to hear a little bit about your past that I don't even know that much about. Uh, And then talk about the future. Because again, you guys are still super, super young. I know you have big ambitions beyond... Uh, the success you've already had. And I'm excited to dig in. I'm excited to see how literally some of the best... You love to touch my hands while... Well, because you don't want to slam your hand on the... Because when you talk, especially when you're meeting, you're very gestural. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I'm just looking out. I appreciate it. And I want to touch your hand. I haven't seen it. (laughs) So yeah, we're we're super excited to to dive in with you guys and learn about what it takes to be... I believe you guys are literally the best North American Fortnite duo in the world. That's a fact. Wait, and that's pure facts. That is a fact. fact. that, That is not subjective. That is not an opinion. That is a fact. I mean, Third place overall, best yep. American team in the world. We're going to get into all that, okay? But while <laughs> I have you guys here, just strap in because we have to thank Rocket Mortgage for being the presenting sponsor of the Self Made Podcast. They've been with 100 Thieves since the very beginning, and we absolutely love them, okay? So I want to give a moment to give a huge shout out to Rocket Mortgage. Uh, we've worked with them since the beginning of 100 Thieves, obviously. I just said that. As a partner, they understand that a home is much more than a house, and nothing is more proof of that than the incredible additions this year to our Rocket mortgage team house for our LCS team. Their dedication to going that extra mile has not only allowed us to elevate 100 hey. Thieves content, but also works to make the home buying process smoother for their clients. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, push button, get mortgage. Now, as always, this podcast... They never available. cease to help us either. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, all right, I'll give <laughs> you that one. I'll give you Yo, that one. Damn it. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. <laughs> wow, you knocked that out of the park. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is available wherever you guys can find podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, but also on YouTube. We would really appreciate it if you're watching on YouTube, man, because I need to get these views up. Help me. Help we me. We got not some beautiful be. faces on here, too, including the cutest ES lead of the year two time that might, be, that might be the title yeah okay yeah. so listen <laughs> right guys there. i want to i want to I, I mean i have a pretty good idea but mm-hmm. i feel like the most relevant part of your story up until this point was probably you guys proudest achievement is 1.9 million dollars i mean you guys placed third at the duo Fortnite world cup we just talked about that but where did you guys come from because i know cease you started in, uh in h1z1 and then elevate you started in csgo yeah but you guys are still so relatively young mm. compared to like the rest of the community so explain to me like each one of you how everything started for you so i mean yeah i, I don't know i started a couple of years ago 
playing just battle royales h1z1 csgo like a while ago i was pretty bad uh until like the end of h1z1 when it was coming to an end and it was pretty much dead at that point i kind of got a grasp of brs had you played any fps's or third person shooters prior to that um no did you play <laughs> uh console at all i played like black ops too like but that's just kind of everyone played black did you ops. watch my videos at all by chance I think, I mean, I think I've watched a couple. I think my brother watched a lot. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just Battle Royale experience and moved on. Fortnite came up and it was like perfect. Like Okay, and I love that. And that's really short and simple answer. But I, I just to dive in even deeper, were you playing video games like growing up your entire life? Or was it something that you just stumbled upon? And you're like, hey, I really enjoy this. Yeah, I mean, I started playing when I was you know, like 11 or 12 maybe, but... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just kind of started young. I like to say, like, with Cease, when he plays video games, I like to say, like, he was put on this earth to play video games. It seems like literally any game he touches and puts time into, he's literally, like, I think the top of the top. That's honestly credited to my family. Like, I wouldn't be able to do this without them. They've literally supported me since the start, and... They don't. They didn't care if I dumped 10 hours a day. They, they'd be fine with this. <laughs> well, I met your parents at the World Cup, and they were incredible so I, I i can really appreciate that and that's what it takes because some parents just don't get it yeah and that's a hurdle that a lot of people didn't get over and to be honest with you probably a roadblock that might have stopped other people from gaming and maybe turning professional whether that was their ambition or not but i hate that description that elevate just gave for you because i hate people like you because it's really difficult for me to get good at games like even <laughs> like call of duty that took a lot of work and i still wasn't considered to be like one of the best yeah i think it just depends the time you put in much you. Study. <laughs> he puts like 10 hours in and he's automatically yeah ragging, you remember, that's, yeah. that's just like a, i know a couple of people that's like skump dude skump's just really good at every game yeah, so yeah. all right we got the breakdown for cease i appreciate that you, yep. you knocked that out of the park as well elevator sure. tell me tell me the secrets tell um, me how you came to be honestly like video games for me were definitely a way like um I'm forgetting the word right now, but escape. it was escape. Yeah, 100%. So like my household, it was like rough. Uh, it wasn't like the worst, you know, like experience. But growing up, I would play like Minecraft was really my first game. You know, I was into that. I had it on my phone. I had it on my PC. You know, if I was at school, I was that kid like in the corner. Like I was playing my little Minecraft pocket edition. <laughs> like everyone's like talking at the lunch table. I was grinding, man. I was building like, I would get like stadiums and I would recreate them in like Minecraft. Holy And God. so I... Stadium? yeah like no full way. football stadiums like huge like like it was so big that minecraft couldn't load it all like you i would have to football fly. all grown up yes okay, i was good. super into sports so like what football team um colts just because yeah so that's sad right now you know <laughs> it's really great being a colts fan I'm sorry <laughs> i mean yeah you just kind of dipped so um did you only watch or were you also like did you play sports i played sports okay. yeah so like my competitive i feel like there's two elevates or two haydens so there's like literally the competitive me and then there's like the outside me like i'm just such like a uh, chill guy like i don't really take anything seriously when i'm not playing comp and then when i'm competitive it's like no one is my friend like you talk trash like i'm talking it back it's an on and off switch for sure yeah uh, like he knows like someone like if i'm like just chilling in a discord i'll be memeing and then like if i'm playing like scrims that day someone's like why did you push that i'm just like i'm, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like dude you're about to get roasted out here like there's no like meaning to so me. what you're telling me is that you're toxic definitely <laughs> only in competitive the though, old elevator was toxic the oh. I got kicked out of the like pro discord for Fortnite as I was coming up because I was so toxic. Wait, I can't imagine what you were saying in like pugs on <laughs> oh, CSGO. Then. Oh, no, no, oh, no. In <laughs> pugs, bro. I, I, so in pugs, there's this thing called karma. So like they can like rate you high or low. And I had zero car karma at all. So like I never was rated higher like through my entire, I played four years and I never got above like 30 karma. That's actually really funny to hear because like you hit the nail on the head. You, you, you are just so chill. You're so goofy and so mm -hmm. laid back. But I've never had to like compete against you or oh, been in that, yeah. that element. I, I I bet you and I would hate each other. Oh, yeah. We would not. Dude. If I was playing COD back in the day, you would absolutely <laughs> hate me. Oh, uh, well, you would probably never would have played against me because you weren't that good. Uh, oh. My reaction times are definitely fast. Kid would have got oh, smoked. <laughs> you would have ran into the brick wall, my, uh, my friend. Know. You would have been one of those kids in uh, league play and that uh, you were trying to just get into like platinum. <laughs> maybe you're like stuck in bronze, maybe shooting for gold. I don't know what it would have been. Mm -hmm. And Hanoi, Hardpoint, or not Hanoi. 
know I the holy shit. That's Black Ops 1. SMD, are you about to flex? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I forgot all the names of the maps, but you would have got like 200 point club. Oh, okay. But you are nasty at every piece. He's not game. even arguing back. He's just like, you can believe that. It's a control, uh, man. Like, I'll be fun. honest with you. I'm grasping on to anything I can right now because I know how good you guys are at PC, <laughs> and it, it really bothers me because I'm just not that good. So when you meet people in real life, are they like, whoa, you're, you're nice. Like, yeah. This is weird. Definitely. I think uh, I met a lot of the people, especially at World Cup, there's a lot of like names that weren't very big who made sure. it. And like, I recognize these names and I'm like, I'm like talking to this guy and I didn't know who he was. And then I see his name and I was like, I just was thinking of that, like back through all the DMs. Oh no. And I was like, I have like absolutely gone in on this man. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, horrible things. <laughs> said some horrible things. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Like I get competitive. Like once people know me, they understand. I like that you but... can turn it on and off though. That's, that's good. Yeah. There's nothing more awkward than meeting somebody for the first time at a gaming event that you've been <laughs> relentlessly talking shit to for the last year. Yeah. Nope. There's that's nothing more awkward. <laughs> because I mean, in Call of Duty anyways, or for me at least, I never, like took it past the game it was always I, like, I have a lot of friends in competitive call of duty that if we had never been in competition against each other we would have been really great friends yep. but there was a period of time where we hated each other because you wanted it as bad, more than they did and they thought they wanted it more than you did so 100%. but then that first meeting is always so awkward then you end up becoming friends it's, yeah you know? definitely okay so how how good exactly were you at csgo <clears throat> I, i'm just curious so for everyone at home so that they know uh, I don't want to hype myself too much because I wasn't like amazing. I just had aim. Like I got an ESCA. There's like different ranks. I was the highest like pub or pug rank at the time. Oh, okay. So, like there's leagues. I was in IM league. Like I was good, but I wasn't amazing because I was like 15, 16, 14 when I played. So I was just brain dead. Like I had no idea what I was doing. And so like anytime I would do well, it's because someone was smart on my team and just told me what to do. So I would just run around like a chicken cut off and like I would throw rounds for a team, but I would also win them rounds. So, okay. That sounds like yeah. a pretty big shift from how you describe <laughs> playing Fortnite now. Yeah, exactly. Like you, I believe you're like the main caller when you guys play. Yeah. yeah. They call what? it an in-game leader. Yeah. Jack. IGL. Sorry, sorry, sorry. IGL. He I'm, said, what'd you say? Caller. <laughs> you're the main caller. I'm, I'm the, the shot, caller. shot caller, but that's like, the, I don't know. Yeah. I Wait, so shots. talk us through <laughs> Fortnite, like getting into Fortnite and that transition for you as what you would describe as a i i actually don't want to i i love that question but mm -hmm. i i think talking about fortnite is probably gonna be the majority of the show Fair so enough. i have like set questions in my head that i want okay. to ask really quickly because yeah, i think definitely. You, you two are a great example of doing this and see so maybe you can explain a little bit more because number one question i've always gotten throughout the years in my comments or on twitter is how do i make it competitively like how do i get my name out there how do i make a brand for myself how do i become recognizable and you guys jumped from community to community to community and what do you guys think was like the number one thing and sees for you more specifically that you did that really solidified okay people know i'm good and i'm in these competitive leagues and this is how i got here that's a beefy question but it's hard right it's difficult I don't, yeah i don't know i get that a lot like you know how do how do you know how do i get to where i am i think that's just like I said, the time you put into it, like you have to, you have to be dedicated to the grind. And that's like, um, like cutting off everything, like, you know, going out with friends and stuff, which is unfortunate, but, um, I, I you know, I had to do that. I, mean, I, I was very dedicated. I didn't want to like fall off or lose like my, my grind, um, or my place in competitive. So, you know, I was just playing all the time. And, um, I mean, I think that a huge thing for me, um, was just taking a big risk. I signed to an organization early on in Fortnite, um, which was a big risk. Um, but uh, they got me to my first land, and so like that experience alone helped carry me. Like helped me find new teammates because I had land experience. Like I was kind of like on my feet already. Um, plus, like networking, I guess it lands. Like get, getting to see other teams and like coaches and managers and stuff like that. So I was getting my name out there in the competitive community. Not to cut you off though, but how do you think you were signed by an org? How did you get recognized by this org? I just, don't even know uh, how I got signed to my first org was just sending emails. Like I just wanted to get because because I, I I really reaching out to teams that way. Yeah, I was. I just wanted to get flown out to this event in Ninja Vegas, um, and they were like, "Yeah, let's I'll, we'll do it and we'll pay for it." And I was like, "Okay." So. You reached out to teams. Yeah. Wow. 
I've never heard of that. I, I, I like that you said like I you had a very specific goal and like mission as you reached out because people reach out a lot all the time yeah. and they're just like, hey, I want to be a pro for 100 Thieves in our, and I'm sure it happens to every team. But I think like a lot of times they don't necessarily have, they're not chasing something specifically. And I would imagine a huge contributing factor. Obviously, they probably looked into you and realized you were pretty good, but it was like, here's my specific ask. Like, I want to go to this LAN event. This is a big deal. I'm going to I'm going to compete and make sure it's worth your while to send me out there. But I think that's an interesting twist on kind of like the, the cold outreach. Yeah. yeah. I mean, goal oriented. It's, yeah. it's really important. Jackson, that's actually a great point. Yeah. People will ask me all the time. How do I be a part of a hundred D's? Like, you tell me like, what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, Oh, I want to go pro. All right. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, yeah. people don't set their, their, their sights at something specific. So they're kind of just drifting about not knowing how to, what steps to take to get there. So, all right, networking, talking to other players. I would say that was always a big thing for me. It's like w when I was coming up, I was playing game battles matches and I would start with playing friends from home or friends uh, from home. I, th th that was my team. And whenever we get our ass kicked, but I would go off because clearly like I was a good player. <laughs> I would then ask them if they want to play or like, hey, add me and let's 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 yeah. grind together. And then if they sucked and then we got our ass kicked by another team, I'm just, I was, I was, I was <laughs> just just hopping around. <laughs> hey, but that's what you had to do because, yeah, yeah no, for and, sure. And like, you got to be a part of the conversation. I think that's a big thing as 100%. well. You know, come to the table with like clear thoughts about settings or rules or the meta and send people tweets or hop into discord or get on Reddit, you know, like make a name for yourself by being consistently there. Mm -hmm. That was really big for me. Elevate, is there anything that I didn't say that you thought helped you? Um, honestly, uh, I started once I knew I was really good. Um, and I knew like I had a really good mind for Fortnite. Like I understood the game better than most people like really early on. So the thing I started doing is I did these tutorials where like how to IGO is what I called them or scrim tips. And I would like, I pretty much no one was making content on comp Fortnite, right? Cause it was all like the big streamers were playing pugs and like having fun, you know? And so like, I saw this different side of it. And so I was making like videos on like how you can control your other three teammates because it was squads back then, like how to rotate to zones and like how to use your uh, utility to rotate to zones. So like for me, my first start and like really how I got my name out there was because I was providing content that like was really changing. It was like they looked inside of like only like 10 people really understood what I was doing back then. And so like people would watch my videos and literally see the thought process of a pro. And all the other pros were like, just really getting mad at me because of this. They're like, why are you leaking strats? Like, why are you saying this stuff? Like, this is what makes us good. We gotta keep this like, um, and they were getting mad at me, but I got like a lot of recognition from that. And like people started knowing my name and knowing that I had a brain for the game and then orgs and like teammates like Cease knew that I wasn't just an idiot. Like, it's really hard to tell who's good and who's not. So he knew like, that I was a good player just off like my videos. I love that. Yeah. How did you know initially that you said like when I realized I was really good? Uh, I was like crushing kids in scrims. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty easy to know. Like, yeah. Whenever you just, you're winning. Yeah. I was, how, how did I know? <laughs> I was you winning. You been like pub stomping and been like, I'm a god. Yeah. No, I was playing against other pros and I was Got winning it. a lot of scrims every day, like a good vast majority. So I was like, yeah, these kids suck. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys know each other before Fortnite? No. Mm -hmm. No. Definitely not. We're different communities. Okay, so tell me how you guys had no idea who each other were to then a year or some change later to being the best Fortnite duo in the entire world. The story of us meeting, I, the first time we met, yeah. like there was like a small tournament. It was like 1v1s basically, but it was oh. right when they first came out. Wait, and, what's it? Wait, what is it? Oh, no. And uh, he was... The old elevate, as I said, so to toxic. <laughs> you were just talking shit. Yes. So it was like a, it was, a, I don't know how to explain it. Basically, it was 1v1s. You were going uh, head to head. And I started like a slight second earlier and I was streaming it. You're all supposed to stream it. So these guys and his, and his friends in Discord would like came in my stream and basically harassed me because <laughs> I was starting early. But in my mind, I wasn't doing it intentional. It wasn't but intentional, but it did technically. Elevate was, <laughs> elevate was so toxic. I was just roasting him like you're. And cheater bro like what are you doing man like i got keyboard warrior boys. yeah i got all my boys you rallied the troops <laughs> yeah oh, man so that was my first experience and the, meeting him and wait, I think, who won the 1v1 I, though I think, yeah, yeah he did i think i did win the 1v1 won. it was two v two to three so it was best of five and i actually haven't told you this story yet but the guy you fought after his name was lamar 
I told him to troll you in the one v one. Yeah, I got trolled because so, <laughs> I was cheating. Or so whatever, usually but. you do like you like build out too. It's like a build battle, right? So Lamar like pretty much he like made it so you only have three hundred mats, and like and so it's literally like you go up like one, and then you're just both out of mats, and you're just like standing there, and it's the most awkward thing. So you guys probably hated each other. Oh yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. It was weird because he was a part of like um a lot of the top competitive players at the time and i was kind of with my my other group so like at the time i you know i was very small and seeing all these big names like you know the top performers in all these tournaments coming in my stream and they're like you know they're hating me i was like freaking out i was like what the f am i doing wrong like <laughs> so it, it shocked me for sure but it was uh an experience i'll never forget that but so how do you go from hating each other <laughs> yeah. To then, hey, bro, you want to team up? <laughs> so pretty much, I think it all really resolves around like Zayt. Pretty much for me, my side, and for you, si your side, I think it's like kind of wanting an org, really. So for me, like I played with this guy named NRG Zayt. Um, you know him, he's like another top pro. Never heard of NRG, actually. I don't know what to <laughs> Anyways, um, he like stopped doing with me, like really like kind of beefed me up a bit, like didn't want to play with me anymore, thought like... I wasn't the player like everyone thinks I am. He and tapped out. He didn't think yeah, yeah. he he dipped. He was like, see you later, buddy. It's like someone I know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, <laughs> um, inside jokes. So he pretty much, um, yeah, we stopped doing. And so like all the other good players were pretty much like, Zayt was kind of like the kingpin of all the little good pro players right so he was like kind of the alpha of the alphas and so like he pretty much like no one wanted to play with me after that like no other he like blacklisted you. yeah pretty much yeah like, you were used up i was i got the curb like, yeah i got blacklisted from this friend group and they like kicked me out of the discord like we don't want to and i, I want to like, see the movie holy cow <laughs> yeah, no, it was like really dramatic for like something so simple and so then i was like trying to find like a teammate and um i knew cease and cease kind of how long ago by the way um this was this time last year right mm, it's like two only years been ago a year. yeah yeah i mean maybe like yeah. a month month yeah a month year. before this yeah yeah so um i knew cease had a bad reputation of being a bit of an idiot but like insanely good like individual skill like one of the like the cream of the crop but like making bad decisions i wasn't a thinker yeah he and just he just kind of killed everyone well, well, openly you admit that <laughs> yeah i don't you think are now. so good <laughs> it's okay well yeah. h1 was all about killer races mama yeah. always said i was a little slow <laughs> <laughs> yeah so pretty much um i was like all right so i'm gonna call the shots like i got the brain but i don't have like what he has with being able to kill everyone right so i'm like I just was like, maybe I can make this work. So I just straight up just sent the first DM we had since it was literally like, you're in cheating, bro. Like, you suck. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm sorry I offended you and your entire family. Let's, yeah. let's do it again. You guys were both exactly. kind of like not in a great spot because you 100%. had been blacklisted. You were the non-thinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just like, I he had also been kind of blacklisted well, in a way. The thing is, is for me, I was in a good spot because I, I had been competing in like the first Fortnite tournaments, like so summer skirmishes yeah. and the fall skirmishes. So I was definitely taking a risk on someone who was less experienced because our yeah. first land was TwitchCon and that was his first land. Got or, it. Yeah. So um, it was definitely a risk, but I needed a teammate that was smart that could think for me, which is <laughs> very nice. That's so true. I learned a lot from him and he carried me. The rest is history. The rest I did is not carry you. So. <laughs> okay. So... That's incredible. Now, Jackson, you get back to what you were well, talking about. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm, ju I'm just curious. You Again, you described yourself in CSGO as like not, yeah. not the smartest player. Was it something that just magically happened with Fortnite? Was it a slower... Was it approach you took where you stopped and said, I need to be a smarter player? How did that happen? So, sorry, you go. No, you go. I, I just think it's... I don't know how complex you can make that answer because it it just happens naturally. I think I have a pretty complex answer for it. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm gonna back, right. I'm gonna back to right. off. I had to shut that <laughs> up, bro. My bad, my bad, my boy. So oh, pretty much way. when I played CS, I played with this guy. He was like 28. He had like four kids and he, uh, his job was he mixed vape juices. Um, okay. And <laughs> his name was Vaping Rat. And anyways, he played CSGO. One up for Vaping Rat. Yeah. Um, anyways, he was really smart and he was like an IGO. Okay. And so like I... I don't know. I was like, I didn't really have like a super father figure at the time. So as like cringy as it sounds, like literally like I talked to this guy all day, every huh. day. And so like, I just respected him just cause he was like nicest soul you'll ever meet. And he was really, really for mixing vape juices as his job. He was insanely smart, like inside of CSGO. 
And so like literally he would be able to just control our team and like make us win just by his mind because we were all just stupid. Like we had no idea what we were But doing. you had crazy aim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had Vaping Rat who <laughs> led us. So I think anytime I played a game after that, like all I cared about was just being like able to outsmart my opponent. It was like huh. way more fulfilling than just like swinging and just being like, 1v2, like, I have cracked aim. Like, for me, it was just way more fulfilling. Shout out Vaping Rat. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, boy. What a guy. You <laughs> talked to him recently? Uh, I think I've DM'd him. I think he plays COD now, actually. Really? Fun fact, yeah. Okay, so he's still around. Yeah. Kind of cool, like, though. You never know who you inspire. 100%, yeah. I love that. Okay, so obviously we had Fortnite. We had a lot of different meta changes, but the World Cup was coming up. All right? Yep. And we shipped you guys off to New York to boot camp. Can you guys tell me about that experience? Because I think one of my favorite parts of being a professional gamer was being able to travel around. And then the time that I spent with my teammates are like memories that I'll never forget. So tell me about like the practice regimen, but also tell me about what, what you guys did, how you like became better teammates by spending more time with each other in real life. I think that's really important for like chemistry. Yeah. Like, just tell me about New York and pre World Cup. I mean, just. I know this guy in and out basically, and that's almost credit to boot camps and like seeing him and talking to him for so long. So like that almost just adds on to our chemistry. Like when we, you know, we stay in the same hotel room or like we're literally by each other 24 yeah. seven leading up to the event. So, I mean, yeah, boot camps are insane for chemistry. I think that any, any team that's trying to make it needs to almost be there in person. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I like to say like boot camps can either win you the land or lose you the land, depending on like how you use the time. So, Definitely. Like, our time, I don't know, like with me and Cease, like we're really cutthroat before lands, like before we really get at each other's necks almost. But we've played for so long that like we, there has to be like respect. I think uh, Steel, the CSGO IGL said this, like, um, like we, we really like each other outside of the game. But like when we're in game, I feel like we hate each other sometimes because we're just trying to get better so fast. Yeah. And so like the number one thing is that we have that makes it works is like we have respect for each other because even if like in those times, like we hate each other at the moment, like for like five seconds, because like we're battling over an idea, we still respect that no matter how much like goes on, we know we're going to do well at lands and we respect our chemistry together. And so like for us, like no matter how mad we get into a conversation. We have that respect and we're able to like build on that. So you guys are camps help that. way too articulate and mature yeah. for your ages. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Bro, when I was 17 and we played bad at a land, I was like, F you, <laughs> <laughs> you're dropped. I don't care how good of friends I was. I'm like, <laughs> you had a 0.75 in respawns. <laughs> I'm not talking uh, to you ever again. Wait, didn't you get dropped from Optic though? What? Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I got, I, I got dropped up from Optic a couple times, and guess what? I always found my way back. <laughs> <laughs> now, I might not have been because I was good, but I had a lot of leverage. Because, <laughs> hey, and that's a life lesson. It's all about guys, the leverage. Have you, did you guys ever in the last year have a point, like a near breaking point? Ooh. I think I could, yeah, but I can't really put my name on it or like my. Probably after WSOE. So it was the first tournament we won. And we both had some big inflated egos. Uh, we were uh -oh. feeling ourselves. So like Cease would say something and I would like disagree with him. Like, no, do what I'm thinking like right now. And so like it was bad, but we like, I think we just had a real moment. Like we were just like, dude, what are we doing? Like, why are we getting mad at each other? Like, let's keep it real. I remember Secret Skirmish. So they went WSW, which was in December. And the Secret Skirmish was in like uh, February. Yeah. Um, a lot like there's a bathroom break like mid tournament and we go out there and I'm just talking with some people and they're they, like this guy named Thwaifo brought up he's like why do you and Elevate always argue because he wasn't there and I was like what are you talking about we don't argue like obviously we don't see it like that like we yeah. kind of just let it go but it was interesting to see like I didn't really think people would pick up on that but people were just yeah, shocked we were that we're together little, still yeah we we're being a little toxic I genuinely can't believe I think it's a testament to you know you know, like for like a video game tournament, right? Mm -hmm. You see who wins and because they were really good, but you don't see the stuff behind closed doors and how serious yep. you guys take this game and like yeah. competitive gaming in general. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, I did not realize I'm, I'm like dumbfounded. Like this is, I didn't realize you guys were this serious about your craft and it shows like you reap the rewards by, you know, like asserting your guys selves. Or uh, not asserting preparation. Yeah. Uh, what's the word? What's the word? No, I think I got to think that. No, 
No, there's a word. You guys, uh, we, uh, it's a commitment. No, no, there's a fucking word. Help me, Jackson. I don't know what it's word like, you're searching for. Uh, <laughs> you prepared yourself, like you preparation, like uh, uh, what teachers always say. Uh, you have to da da da. You have to apply yourself. Ah, uh, you guys really apply was, yourselves to really the game. There it is. Here we go. That was our yeah. I guess the word was not good. Work. That was like a one star word. I'm <laughs> I thought like, it was gonna be like some like benevolent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Just apply a p p l y. Oh <laughs> god. But I. This is listen. This is a lesson that you got. Like listen. Listen to the way that they talk about the game. Listen to the way they talk about themselves as teammates. And look at the way they talk about their preparation. Like. It's f***ing, I can't believe it. I think the most the most surprising thing or the most like clear thing to me is just it's so clearly not an accident. And I think people look at competitive uh, gaming and the debate, are you athletes or is it like sports or whatever? And one of the things is, as I've learned more and more and spent more time with actual players is just how, at least when it comes to the mental commitment and the teamwork elements, how it is exactly the same as sports. Yeah. And it wasn't an, like we were, we had dinner with you guys the night before the world cup and just hearing you talk through how you were going to prepare in the case of a bad scenario. And the next day you ended up starting kind of slow mm -hmm. and ended up doing great anyway. And I think it's just, it's so clear to me that pe people have this mindset almost that like, oh, if I spend enough time, anyone could be a pro gamer yeah. uh, or anyone could be in, you even touched on it too. Even if you have the gun skill and you've put in so much time, you, there's so many elements of this. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so clear. It's not an accident. I think that's really, really awesome. Okay. So I, cause I have so many questions and a lot of it has to do with money because you guys want a ton, <laughs> but walk me through the world cup, man. Just, just give me the quickest synopsis that you can give me of the actual tournament and what happened. Well, duos started off I, like the whole tournament. So the quickest I can do it, right? First of all, the way we play online is, I would say, insanely different to land. Yeah, like you have to our like mentality, like everything changes. Like I, he's not even the same person. I'm not the same person. Like we just it's it's weird. I can't explain it, but we just play like out of our minds on land and anything that bad happens like online, you know, may hit us for longer. But here, like it's done, like it's over. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. First game. He dies off spawn. Um, <laughs> it's your boy. <laughs> and we, we had hired a coach before, so we had been prepping, like, you know, who's going to land on our spot and, like, their strats. And they did something that we had never expected uh, in the practice games, and they killed us twice. They had um, our number. They were, <laughs> they, they, were, they were good. They were very smart. Who was it? Uh, Thomas and Cluzia. Why you got to drop their name, man? Never uh, heard of them. <laughs> exactly. Eating. No, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, they, <laughs> they, we had known there was a spot nearby that we scouted earlier, and we ended up taking it. The game that he died off spawn since I was playing solo, I was in a baller. That's the time that they had ballers. Um, and I think that's that's actually why we did so well. So Thomas and Cluzia, even though they had the whole POI uncontested, they still got, like, what, like 20th? Yeah, like, they, they didn't, didn't even do that good. Money, yeah. uh, which I think we would have done better, but getting third versus 10th or something, that I mean, we would have gotten, like, 10th. But yeah. ballers basically carried us. Like, the team that won the tournament... <laughs> Where where they were playing ballers, the team that got second was playing ballers. ballers. Us third, ballers. Fourth, ballers. <laughs> fourth was Pretty the only fair. team not ballers. ballers. Was that and was that an adaptation you made live on the day, or something yeah. you thought about coming in? We knew that spot was uncontested. It was um, a backup. Yeah, because we had played scrims against another team, and they run that exact route. So we like because we yeah they run basically around us. So we knew their their whole route. So it was already like in our brains. Mm -hmm. Like we already knew. But yeah, that was our backup plan. We had a couple backup spots figured out. But that was just so much easier. It was in the area. Like, it was it was pretty easy. Yeah. But. So pretty much game two or game one, Cease clutches up. Or game two, Cease clutches up. And then game three or four, I clutched up. And then the rest of the games we played them out as a duo and was super consistent. We're like, we're always late game compared to some people who are like, make it late, die early, make it late, win a game, die early. So like, we are always late game other than our first game. So. Yeah, I think we had top 10 placements every game. Yeah, so that's how it felt we you guys were our rising, way in. literally rising. Yeah, we literally do. Round. Yeah, Just increasing momentum. That's how now, all our tournaments look too. Look, there's $3 million on, uh, on the table like mm -hmm. to win. Or more than that, obviously, a ton of more than that. $30 million, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every time you got a kill in game, tell me how that felt. Um, I can't really remember my first kill to be honest. I remember but. mine. It was the storm surge. So there's this thing in the game called storm surge, right? And if you don't have damage, it pretty much just like eliminates oh. you instantly. It just starts lightning bolts like 25 of your HP away. So like we're first zone. We literally in the perfect place we can be first game. 
And then all of a sudden it goes, doo -doo -doo, like the storm surge pops up and I just start getting lightning bolted. So I'm like, well, we're going to die. So we pretty much just, these poor souls set up. They probably had, like were set for game and you just see us just cannonball over to them, <laughs> like start pickaxing their walls. And like I killed one, Cease goes in, dies, like, cause like we literally had like 10 seconds of life left. Yeah. So we're just jumping. I in. forgot about that. We actually did die <laughs> game very one. early game one, which is yeah, I think that's very credible to us as on land. Like, yeah. if you die off spawn your first game or die the way we it's did, so like, hard. most teams are done. Like, they, yeah. Yeah, their, their mental is, is ruined. And that's what I said but, after that game was like, dude, everyone who just died to the storm surge, half the lobby's out of this. Yeah, I mean, we sat there before. for like 20 minutes just waiting for the next game. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it can be really mentally That's wrong. demoralizing, yeah. for sure. It's, we yeah. even I remember a lot, the night before we even talked about, like, once you get that first kill and you lock in and then you die off spawn, it's <laughs> yeah. like, well, there goes that idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Something probably sank. Yeah. yeah, no, it was rough, but... I mean, I'm used to it. You know, that, that shit happens. All right. So we get to the end of the tournament. Mm -hmm. I think at one point you guys had an opportunity to win the whole thing, right? Yeah, we definitely yep. did. The last game we could have won it all. Yeah. Uh, there's there was a bug in the game. In the World Cup finals, there was a bug where there's a shadow form. Like the in the game, they had shadow bombs. So yeah. you could go like basically invisible. And there's a bug that we've never <laughs> seen before that you could be visible while you're in the shadow form. You yeah, can't yeah, build or shit. Yeah. Do you know the Gmod T pose like like in prop hunt where they just like walk around like that? Yeah. Dude, that is what the shadow bombs looked like. You, you would just yeah, see it people was pretty filming, bug. like just full T posing. We got a couple kills. We got a couple kills by and, uh, using it. Uh, but. Yeah, so I'm turtling in. I'm like, these guys are T posing, bro. Like <laughs> they can't do anything. Just shoot them. And so we're just beaming these guys, just bunny hopping around the map, just full T pose. <laughs> and, oh, bro, I bet that must have been it's such a great feeling. Yeah, it was. I was like, we have three points, maybe. Let's <laughs> say hello to my little friend. Yeah. Exactly. So the tournament ends. You guys yep. won 1.9 million dollars. That mm -hmm. is life-changing exactly i mean i i, I won't forget it because i was like seven white claws deep at that point <laughs> and i and in my box that i was sitting in i was in tim the tabman's box and ninja and so that day we had all been drinking they literally had their management team leave the stadium to go to a store and to bring white claws in <laughs> Like they had to go through like seven layers of security just to get them in it was unbelievable so i was enjoying myself but where i was sitting at in that box, I could see your guys' screens directly because yeah. the way the stage was set up for anyone that didn't watch the World Cup, it was basically like a square. And so it's like players here, players here, players here, players here. Mm -hmm. And I had a direct view at them. And so obviously in Battle Royale, you can't watch every POV. And so all I was staring at was your guys' health bars. <laughs> so you guys end up winning third place. I lose my mind. I'm, I'm going nuts. And then I make eye contact with you guys finally. And you got your Canadian flag. <laughs> and you guys are just so elated. And I'm yeah. so happy for you guys. And we're like pointing at each other. Right. <laughs> Hey, my boy, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so you win $1.9 million. I, first question I have is for Elevate because you're still in high school, right? Yeah. All right. Obviously, you win a bunch of money. What is high school like now? Um, Did you go back yet? So I take online school. Oh, okay. I went to the football game and it was the first time I've really seen everyone from my high school in literally a year. Um and it was weird. Like they know. Yeah, they all know. I, like, they, were they going nuts? Yeah. And so like I got them all on my Insta story to like start chanting like use code V, which is like my <laughs> shop code. So I'm like, I, I don't know. It was just really fun. And like, yeah, some of the girls who like weren't interested in me before all of a sudden are curving my line. <laughs> oh so, uh, man. We'll see. I <laughs> we'll know now. <laughs> okay. Block them. Block them all. Don't talk to them girls. Yeah, them nah. fats. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're white Hirachis walking up to you. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so what, all right, when what, for you, you're out of school, right? Or did yeah. you drop out? I don't know your situation. Yeah, no, I yeah, dropped out. No, I graduated earlier this year. A lot of people drop out. You'd be, I, there, I, I know way too many people like professional gamers that have dropped out. I'm like, that's rough. Monka. Yeah, don't, don't do it. Graduated earlier this year and I just kind of stayed with my family and. He plays I don't really have a reaction to a lot of these things. Like when we won, I was just kind of mellow. You're a stone cold what? killer. All right. Well, that sh this is boring. What did you guys do? What's the most expensive thing you've bought so far? Ooh. I mean, I could go on for a little bit, but so <laughs> wait, so go on. Please all do. Right, all right. So see, baby. after the weekend, uh, I stayed for a couple of days after I gave everyone that came out, like <laughs> my uncle, my brother, my, uh, you know, my mom, my dad, I gave them everything. Uh, or I gave them a thousand dollars a piece to spend. So they all spent like <laughs> around like 10 grand, something like that. And then I also, when I came home, I uh, upgraded my whole setup. So like I got the best of the best stuff. 
dual PC. All right, so we got ten grand out the window from your family. Anyone in your family buy anything cool? Yeah, I mean, we went to like all like the big stores. So this family got Gucci. Nice. Wait, hold on, let's count this up. So you got ten grand out the door for that. Yeah, and then you had probably grand. another ten for all the setups. Yeah, I saw you bought a remote suitcase. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. yeah. There's another fifteen hundred out. Yep. So that's twenty one. You know what else? I Bro, mean, that's about it. White's on, but I no, we had those before. I bought. That's only good at accounting when it comes to spending. But yeah, dead ass. Yeah, dead ass. Oh no, yeah, I got a lot of stuff, and then we just got some new stuff today. But so, yeah. So what else? So cool. What's your favorite? Legs thing you on them. Mm. I don't know. I like these shoes a lot. Like these Those are just are lift your leg up. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, you can. Like, you got it. Oh, oh. You got the Serena's oh, off white. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go. No, but I got all the colorways. So like, you know, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just, uh, I like the type of shoes. So, so you've been enjoying the money. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. Are you, uh, you're not overspending though, right? No, I think, I mean, I think I'm done. Like I just, you know, I just wanted to treat myself. <laughs> I want to treat my family most importantly. But <laughs> what's up? What elevate? No, elevate over there giggling. I don't to know. Honest, to be honest, I used to buy a lot of random shit. Like, yeah, you did. I hope I'm not like supposed to cuss, but that's okay. You can say whatever you but want. But yeah, I like ten times. <laughs> I, I, you know, buy a lot of random stuff, and uh, now I kind of spend like maybe one thing a month, if yeah. if that. Like, I have I've cut back. All right, so now I'm gonna get to you in a second, but I'm curious about you. So I think now more than ever, there's more women paying attention. Too. Damn right, baby. <laughs> right there. There's, there's yeah. more women paying attention to, to gaming in general. What are the stats on this podcast? <laughs> it's, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> have you had any? Uh, have <laughs> you ever, a few women. <laughs> yeah, maybe like two. <laughs> have you had any girls hit you up that you kind of think, oh, wait, what's, what's going on here? I mean, yeah, I've had a couple DMs, but... I like to keep it private, you I'm know. The weed man, smart man. I was just smart trying. To, I was just man. trying to get a headline for the podcast. I was baiting you. You did good. <laughs> Can I tell him the story about the profile picture? Or nah. I mean, hell yeah! Uh, yeah. Nah, you no, gotta no, tell no, him. No, 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 no. Name. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. okay. Hey, hey, yo, what up? So, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister CC is uh, talking to this uh, female, and. Um, so pretty much they're having a very, I'm trying to keep this, like not leak anything. So they're having a very long conversation. It's, it's been going for a few days, you know. Um, you know, both parties find each other attractive. I would say that. Right. And um, so Caesars, uh, she get, she did the old trick in the book. See, as the cutest e-athlete in two years, <laughs> if you're talking to a girl and she changes her profile picture, that is the number one key you must pick up on ever so like the modern haircut a hundred percent wait tell me why so like it's like if she changes her profile picture if you don't notice the change in the profile picture like that is bad that means you're not looking at her profile page you're looking at other girls profile pages that's see wait I mean. that's how you view that 100 percent. so she was trying to bait him trying to figure it out 100 percent. and he didn't so, say nothing no. young elevate here well, recognizes your this. boy and i told him he was like oh she changed her profile picture i was like right now i was like you got text <laughs> dude this this is like a 10 minute ago change this shows you really care about this but girl. now she knows it was you who called him uh, no nah, she's my wingman yeah i'm oh, just okay. she knows like you we're gonna I'm check kidding. it anyway yeah i know you were yeah. Wait, th this is like the digital version of the like haircut thing. Yeah, your did did you notice your wife's new haircut? A hundred percent. She's like, do you notice anything different? <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I, yeah, you let out a fart. Like, no, <laughs> no, honey, no. You weren't yeah. wearing that shirt yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you so, got something stuck in your teeth. What is that? Oh, oh, <laughs> So pretty much I've had girls like change their profile picture for like 10 minutes and change it back to see if I notice like they're Whoa, Oh my god. Like, there's some this psycho like some big brain stuff. Dude, this is I welcome to being 17. I want yeah, the dating podcast from you guys after this. 100%. Oh, I am this fall. down to run that, man. Bro, if a girl got mad at me for not recognizing that she changed her profile picture 10 minutes ago, I'd tell her to go kick rock. I think they're, they're a little bit younger than us. I think this might be like a generational thing. Oh, I've for never sure. heard of We're this Zoomers. before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys, you guys are, are what? Gen Z. We're, we're Zoomers. Zoomers. Yeah. We're Zoomers. Proudly represent. Uh, so boomers are like baby boomers. And so yeah. Gen Z, we're called Zoomers. I kind of uh, dig that. It's uh, kind of, yeah. yeah, that's dope. <laughs> the, the, some it's Zoomer just we're just zooming around. Yeah. No idea uh, what you're should doing. should be our podcast right there. Zoomer knowledge. Dang. Zoomer yeah. knowledge. And like then that. all, all the dads there. and stuff, like all the moms who like want to know like about their kids and stuff, 
Dude, I'm saying we have a market here. You do. Now we're or you could, you could do a podcast with like some boomers and you guys and you call it boomers and zoomers. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> that's pretty good. I don't that's know what good. it'd be about, but anyway. Jackson, shut the f*** <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is a business. All right, <laughs> baby. Uh, so what have you done with your money? Um, Honestly, before, if I wasn't, if I won money with a cease, like a different clone of cease that doesn't spend a lot of money, I would have, I would be pulling up in like, like a gap shirt, ten dollars. Like I would just be chilling right You're now. You're kind of feeding off his spending. Yeah. So like he spends, and like I kind of am like, well, I don't want to look like like if I pull up and like Cease is out here flexing like all Gucci, and I'm here like in my ten dollar Gap shirt, my fifteen dollars H and M pants and stuff. Like I got a little self conscious, you know. So I'm like, okay. I started spending to match him. And now I'm just absolutely like addicted. Like I'm probably gonna be broke. Like you're saying, he's just a fantastic influence. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, not really. This man's a great influence. Wait, all right. Well, let's <laughs> slow it down. All right, so <laughs> let me get a fit check. All right, both y'all. Uh, uh, have you got? So I did a vlog with Enable. Uh huh. And he did a fit check. Uh, yeah. So he basically tell me how much shirt costs, how much shoes cost. What's your whole outfit cost? You got to describe it for uh, the people listening. Yeah, fit yeah. check. All right. So I got the red Balenciagas, Run the it. ones that look like socks. Uh. Like nine hundred forty-five dollars gone at Rodeo, the one and only. Um, I got this off-white shirt. Actually, bought this five minutes ago for the podcast. Beautiful. Uh, it looks dope. Yeah. So it's like a turtleneck, but not like super. Not like a nineties like. Like it's like how super much? Steve Jobs. Uh, this was like like five hundred four hundred. Oh, okay. And then I bought two pairs of shorts, which were five hundred and four hundred dollars. Whoa, are they leak shorts? Like what type of shorts? They're like um, ones off-white. And then what's the other brand? Palm Angels. Yeah. Palm, Palm Angels. Current you, Damn. Yeah, if kidding. current you told your, wait, yourself wait, 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 a year wait, wait, ago wait. that you spent that much on clothes, how do you think you would react? I uh, definitely slap the shit out. Guys, <laughs> we didn't finish the fit check. Sorry, All right, sorry, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> according to my calculations, it's all around $12,000. Got it. Cease. Fit check. I uh, mean, <laughs> you know, OVO shirt. Got to represent. Mm -hmm. Some black pants. Oh, black, black pants. And uh, <laughs> fifteen dollar gap pants. Yeah, fifteen dollar gap pants and some uh, off white Nike blazers. So you got like eight hundred thousand dollars on you, right? Yeah, now. yeah, it's a lot. It's like that's pretty much World Cup. You're just you got the Cease it. logo too. The yeah. statement. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, this is uh, you know, not you can't even price. This is valuable. Wow, yeah. million dollar hat. Nice. All right, so let me ask you this: You guys won all this money. You guys got to pay your taxes. <laughs> you get to save it. You guys are gonna be well off for a little bit. What What's next? Because from how I can tell you guys still speak about the game, it sounds like you're taking it very seriously, even though you've won a lot of money. And I'm sure there's going to be more opportunities mm -hmm. in the future. How are you guys making sure that you don't get lost in the sauce here and, and stay at the top of the game as players? Um, I think it's easy to get lost. Like, there's a lot of things we can do. But for me, it's kind of like I really love my job right now. And so a lot of things I've been worrying about is longevity-wise, like of what I'm doing. So, I mean... Just doing the same thing I was doing, um, like it's really hard when you're coming up, you have so much motivation. Like it's it's like every day you get on and you're like, I'm ready to play 12 hours. Like I'm looking at like, I'm looking at like 72 hours and like Cloaksy and Tifu like at the top of the top. I'm like, man, I want to be like them, you know? And then once you actually like get there and like I'm not at their level, right? Or anything like content wise, but like I'm more like accomplished competitive than them. So like for me, it's like, you lose that motivation. So remembering the motivation and what you did as you're coming up and applying that to now is very important for me. And that's what I try to do. That's exactly it. I, I feel, I, I felt really, uh, I don't know if sad's the word, but I definitely wasn't, I, I definitely didn't feel in the right mind after World Cup because I've, I had accomplished so much there. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, I mean, I got to get back into it and I'm getting into it now, but I don't know. I hate to blame the game the game's not in a great state with like the mechs and stuff, <clears throat> but I don't want to blame the game because I know that's not me and I, I hate people that do that. So mm -hmm. it's just like, it's just, you know, I got to find the grind again, but yeah, find the grind. So like, find all, the grind. Did you guys like, did you have something you wanted to do for work before all of this? Did you always want to be a pro gamer? Was it, <laughs> was that something you thought about or was it just kind of like I'm a 17 or a 16 year old kid? Like, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I was probably just going to go to college. Like figure out what I want to do from there. Honestly, probably would have just gone into business just because uh, that's so like open, you know, I could just do so much with that. But I think now, like after, you know, seeing what this is all about and like esports in general, like I'd love to work in esports. So, but yeah, I mean, 
if you know this all fails or whatever then <laughs> i'd love to somehow like get a start in esports and like yeah put my foot in the door and maybe have a team of my own one day like oh. you know hunter thieves rivalry or something oh like that. is that a threat god, god damn <laughs> still on the team man he's right here <laughs> I'm, you guys, I'm uncomfortable <laughs> you th- do you think about you are you kind of only thinking about like the next six months next year are you like i'm gonna be a pro fortnite player for the next five years mm-hmm. do you think about it that way or are you more focused on next tournament i think six months ago no i would have just thought it really short term but now I think I'm thinking a lot more long term. I don't know about five years. I know I should be thinking probably about that long or ten years, but I don't. I think you're you're doing okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bad. I'll tell you what. It's pretty. It's it's almost impossible to uh, plan ahead if you're a professional gamer because you don't know what the devs are going to bring to the table. You don't know yep. what type of tournaments you're going to see in the future. You don't know if your game is going to die. You don't know if there's going to be a new game where there's more opportunities. I feel like you guys are in a tremendous spot because you are talented when it comes to keyboard and mouse. And there's always going to be new shooters that pop up and you guys have displayed that you can be the best at the, mm-hmm. any game that you really commit to. So I think you guys have a long, a long, long way to go. And I wouldn't overthink it too much, to be honest. I think the one thing that scares me about what you just brought up is you don't, it, I've seen it happen a lot and I'm worried, like, I don't want to be too far gone before I can recover. Like, I don't want to think like, oh, you know, I, I've had all this experience in Battle Royale. Like, say another game comes out and I think I can, you know, put my all into it and I do and I fail. <laughs> I don't want to be like, I still got it. Like, let me, you know, like some 80-year-old yeah. man trying to go play basketball or something. Like, you just don't have it. Like, you know, cut it out. Like, you go do something else. Like, I want to realize that before it's too late. Says the 18-year-old. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of yeah. Yeah. Eight, you're 18. No, it's fair. <laughs> you're 18. That's insane. You're 18. What yeah. do you guys' like days look like? Oh, as a like a pro, you're prof, some of the best professional would, Fortnite players in the world. I was actually planning on doing a meme about this because okay. like I was gonna do like a day in the life of Elevate and post on Twitter and it, it's like thirty seconds. Like, okay. yo guys just woke up. Um, yo guys just took a shower, about to go scrim. Yo guys just got food and then just like yo guys, I'm going to bed. Peace. <laughs> Literally <laughs> That's every much single it, day. Yeah. Just like, wake up, scrim. If there's no scrims, which is happening a lot recently, then just, <laughs> yeah. Wait, didn't you get blasted on Fox News for your interview? Oh, it was, <laughs> so I'm Canadian, right? So it was the Canadian broadcast, like the CBC, right? Like national television. I told all my homies to watch this. Like, dude, I'm going to be on the CBC. I was flexed into my like homies back in Calgary and stuff. And then like, I'm watching the interview and like, it's like my part. It's like professional gamer Hayden Kruger. I do like my perfect interview per- portion, which I just absolutely crushed in. Then she goes, mm-hmm. yikes. <laughs> and I'm just standing there. I'm in a group of four people like on this cruise with like my friends. And I'm like watching this and it goes, yikes. And just, I'm like, like I was just at first I was heartbroken, man. Like it was actually sad at first. And then like after like a few minutes, like I just thought it was the funniest thing ever. Cause like to me it just shows like she just doesn't doesn't understand. Like I mean that went pretty that, viral on Twitter after yeah, literally everyone in the community. Yeah, yeah no, and, and the community you. was just behind me. Yeah, of course it would be. And let me tell you this, you earned you earned more in one day than I'm sure she ever will. <laughs> yeah. In like a year or two or three. I don't know how much mm-hmm. the broadcast talent makes in in, in Canada, but I can't imagine it's nine hundred thousand dollars a year <laughs> yeah could yeah. be who knows it's, just, it's a good reminder but i guess though. that's not what's all the only thing that's important yeah, money is like, everything. yikes it is yeah. a good reminder though but just like of how yikes. how new this <laughs> still is for so many people 100%. and the idea that what no i'm sorry to cut you off dude i was uh at the bears game yesterday i just got back from a flight from chicago um mm-hmm. depending on when you're watching this i went to the home opener packers versus bears and uh I was in the bathroom um, at halftime. Now, this is the longest line I've ever seen in my entire life. I swear to God, I sat there in 20 minutes and I thought I was going to piss myself. When you get into the bathroom, it's, it's probably like the size of this room, pretty small. And every urinal has a line of like 10 people behind it. So I'm like eighth in line and there's this guy, second in line, turns around, sees me. He's like, oh my God, Nate shot. Oh my God. <laughs> He's like, Johnny, Johnny, look who it is. It's Nate shot. And then they both lose it. Then they let the people in front of them skip. And then we're taking a selfie in the bathroom. <laughs> and so they finish pissing and I'm still in the back of the line. They leave. And the guy behind me, he's like some old ass grumpy. F- I don't know. I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like him. And he says, the internet is a weird place. I don't know what I just witnessed there, but it's weird. 
and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, oh, yeah, you'll figure it out. I don't know what you want me to tell you, old, old, you old man. Now <laughs> shut up and let me piss. <laughs> I didn't like that guy. But it just goes to show you, like, people just don't get it. Yeah, people definitely. just don't get it, man. And, I mean, yeah, I guess if I saw somebody, like, taking a selfie in a bathroom, <laughs> screaming out a word I've never heard of, I'd be confused. But yeah. that just, I hate, like, the old guard of people that, like, th- th- there's a there's a divide. There's, there's older people in this world that just don't get it and there's older people that try to understand like oh that's pretty interesting i like that yeah you know and luckily i have parents luckily you guys both have parents that are like optimistic about it and accept it and let you do what you want to do i think the other cool thing is like i don't know when i was five i wanted to be Derek jeter there are like seven-year-olds who want to be you guys and that is a unbelievable thing bro that's 100 percent true that's me i this is actually one of my other favorite stories not to like take over the conversation here Mm -hmm. but i was walking around in my old neighborhood that i lived in and somebody was uh driving really slowly in a maserati (laughs) and there was like four kids on scooters and they audibly yelled out do you think that's a youtuber in there they, they they didn't they their first thought was not oh that's some like Kobe Bryant yeah. or some rich businessman or whatever they thought it was a YouTuber like they they wanted it to be a YouTuber that just goes to show you like cultural shift that's have, insane if your lives changed outside of the money which we already talked about have your lives changed in any other ways since winning obviously it sounds like you're still practicing a lot you're playing mm, to feel different I this sounds weird but like doing well at tournaments like. We, I feel like we expected to do well at tournaments. Yeah. Like we thought we were the best, so yeah, we should do well at tournaments. So like winning a tournament, it's not like, oh my gosh, this is like some insane thing to me. If anything, the biggest change for me would honestly be joining 100 Thieves. Um, like the content, A, hey, represent. But like seriously, like I had no idea how to be on in front of a camera. Like I had no idea how to be a personality. I had no idea what to do on stream, like what's funny, what's not. And so like joining this brand that really understood that really changed like me the most more than just doing well at these tournaments. Cause I mean, if you watch the first, uh, world cup house tour, like f- it was like six months ago, five months ago now, like, uh, mud dogs there, you know, walk in, like, I'm surprised by these cameras. Like I look awkward. Like I have no idea what I'm doing at all. Like I, I felt so lost. I felt like kind of nervous. And like now, I mean, I'm on this podcast. If I was on this podcast five months ago, I'd be like, and you're crushing it. Crushing it. First of all, clip that. We got to put that on like our wall or something <laughs> yeah, like in a constant loop because thank you very much. That no means problem. a lot. Second, I would like to say that you are a natural and you're thank still you. so young <laughs> to be, to have the presence that you already have and to be able to do this podcast like is incredible. And Cease as well. You guys, yeah. from the time I had my first conversation with you to now, I feel like you guys have grown so much as just individuals. Mm-hmm. And I really love to see that. So I would, I get, that was actually going to be my next question that you hit it. The, your, uh, your time on 100 Thieves, the experience been good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. he literally couldn't have said it better. I was, I still am like a little on the shy side, I guess. I think I'm open the more I get to know people. Mm-hmm. But 100 Thieves has like brought that out of me. Like, you know, I'm just, I think the more time I spend on this like org and around these people, like, I mean, I'm gonna be the next Nate shot, you know, little, little Nate shot. <laughs> Run it. Apparently, nah, you want to be order. better than that, bro. You want to be the next Cease, man. Nah, don't am, right? set, set, set your, your sights high. I think that is one of the cool things, though, about unlike traditional sports, which I think is catching up, but so much of being a professional esport athlete is the entertainment side, too. And like, you're almost like living and practicing and playing and growing in public. Um, people are watching you stream most days. And I think that, like, in the long run will pay off for so many of you guys for yeah. and for a lot of athletes who have just kind of historically always avoided it and not i understand why but i think that's a it'll it will set you up for greater opportunities in the long run whether or not you're competing which i think is awesome yeah i mean yeah <laughs> let's run it boy i awesome. mean I, I actually don't have many other questions like we covered a lot of topics that i i just wanted to put down on on audio and on video and, and mm-hmm. have our like this was so different for me because i relate to you guys like so much with mm-hmm. how young you are and your guys your guys road to being like a professional gamer and the come up and start to make money and you know it's i love listening to like scooter and fwiz and hector talk because like i admire their careers and what they've accomplished but i mean i just see myself so much or the experiences that i had when i was younger and you guys and i, I love it and you guys have like really good heads on your shoulders you guys are approaching it the right way you guys respect each other as teammates and you guys apply yourselves and you treat this as a job and in my opinion, this is one of the best examples I could probably give to somebody on how you should think about the game and how you should think about your teammates and how you should think about 
just applying yourself. So I appreciate it. This was actually like a lot more profound and eye opening <laughs> for me than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I thought we were just going to bullshit and I was, uh, elevator was going to crack jokes. We were, <laughs> we were talk about CCZ girls, but <laughs> oh, come on. I was definitely planning on that too. I think it was a good direction, like a change. It yeah. wasn't what I expected. And that, that flew by. That was like an hour, I think. <laughs> I, I just think you guys are such awesome representations of like when people, I'm, I'm so curious what people like think of when they think of a pro gamer and they probably think of a dude in his mom's basement eating burritos <laughs> where, like, yep. who's like so isolated from, from the world. And I think in terms of your work ethic, in terms of how you like, you're willing to have fun and, and see that side of it too, mm -hmm. but how you approach the game as competitors and as professionals, like, I think a lot of people watching this who don't necessarily have that great a perspective will, I'm really proud that they're seeing you guys and I'm proud that you're part of 100 Thieves. Run it. Guys, Cease and Elevate, you guys can find their social medias in the description below. Do you guys have anything else you want to say? Use code Vic. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. First, like, on-site <laughs> podcast. So, like, another one in the books type thing. Like, I think... Yeah, uh, put another knots in the belt. Yeah, I think this experience for me has been amazing yeah i mean the setup here is so much for having us what do you guys have coming up in terms of competitive uh, or anything nice. else it's like a trio tournament and oh, then yeah, Monka. and then we have twitchcon which is like uh we're playing like we really don't know I, basically yeah. actually fortnite yeah. competitive doesn't really do you, do you have a sense of where and when people can look out for you guys Stomp i mean up again Sorry, I'm having trouble with the not you siri oh <laughs> thank you very much uh <laughs> End of September for trios? Yeah, there's going to be another couple land, yeah, I think. Yeah. But um, some stuff in the future. We're we going to be competing online. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then oh. you can check out 100 Thieves Live to see that too. Run yeah. it. Season Elevate. Follow them. Yeah. Lots of good content. Uh, listen, guys, make sure to remember to hit the like button and uh, rate the podcast on Spotify or iTunes if you can. We really appreciate that. Make sure you guys give it five stars. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Self Made. Uh, actually, you know what? We didn't read our five-star review from the beginning. Oh, yeah. And Alex oh. took the time to pick it out. So I'm going to read it. Uh, as an entrepreneur myself, it is... Oh, oh wait. This is a five-star review from a username called Crazy Madness. As an entrepreneur myself, it is always great to hear stories of other people's success and how they achieved at that level. I love listening to the Self Made podcast. Amazing guests you have on. I can't wait to see who will be the next guest. Well, now you know. But yes, I can't wait to see the next guest either. But you guys were uh, easily my top three, like in my favorites, 100%. Appreciate everybody watching. <laughs> Girls, hit them up. Hey, DMs open. Nah, I'm DMs good. open all Twitter day. open, Insta open. Hey, leave a YouTube comment. Catch an Ella vlog on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. We Ella got vlog. a comment. Ella vlog. Hey, we got a lot more content coming from Cease and Elevate uh, soon. So make sure you guys follow them. Keep following 100 Thieves. We appreciate you guys. And thank you so much for tuning in another episode of Self Made. Shout out Rock and Mortgage. Shout out Oak Boy. Shout out Ron Jobinson. I'm out. Peace. Later. Peace.